back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. It's the, the 11 o'clock block here on a given Tuesday uh, here on Think Tech. And we have Catherine Knorr. And we're going to do what we do every month. We're going to talk about our survey. Hi, Catherine. Hello, Jay. So every month we do a survey. We open it on the first of the month. And we go through the 15th. Then we close it. And we ask about a dozen questions. We send it out to our mailing list. And we put it everywhere we can because we want to find out what people are thinking and doing, especially in the time of COVID. Uh, we will uh, we will talk today, Catherine and I, about um, exactly what what the answers were on this survey. We call it reopening realities, and it's about reopening. Um, although <laughs> right now we're kind of in the pause, um, and uh, we'll also post we'll post the link uh, for the survey so you can look at it probably tomorrow in the in the uh, in the daily email advisory so you can get it both ways and see what people are thinking. So let's go to our survey. I so enjoy doing this because it gives you a handle on what's going on outside. And, um, you know, when you're, when you're stuck at home, uh, sometimes you don't, you don't know what's going on outside and this helps. Okay. The first question, let me see. Hmm. What was the first question? Are you continuing to stay home in the reopening? Yes. Okay. And it uh, looks like the, uh, the, the great uh, plurality anyway is uh, I'm still staying at home. Um, I guess the next one, this is interesting, the next uh, biggest, that was 34%. The next one is I'm still staying at home, but I'm not as much, but not as much as before. So there's the reopening for you. How about the rest of it, Catherine? Well, I'm out and about on some days, which is about 18%. And I'm out and about every day, which is about almost 16%, which is like me. Okay. Um, like you. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, you're a practicing lawyer. You know, I mean, a lot of practicing lawyers I know are out and about. Sure. Then we had some odd responses. I shouldn't say odd, but, you know, comment type of responses. And uh, here's a couple of them. Um, only out to go and to and from work. That's all from that respondent. Uh, another one was um, back at work, but keeping pretty much to home otherwise. And another one is I'm staying at home except for essential trips to the doctor, to the post office, long may it live, uh, and to uh, commission meetings. We don't know who this person is, but apparently this person is on a commission. And, and, and all these answers, mind you, were from uh, July 1st to July 15th. So that's where we were. You know, things have changed a little bit in the last week or two. So um, that's the picture at that time. Let's go to the next one. Are you working? Uh, select one. So what are the answers, Catherine? Okay. The vast majority is working at home. And then there, um, it, well, not vast majority, 50, um, close to 58% are working at home. And then... Uh, 26% are working in their regular place of business, um, 0% at another location, and also 0% are working at multiple places. And there's only 13% not working, but we don't know whether that might be retired people. Looks like it is. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is. That yeah. explains that, yeah. Right, right. But we don't have those unemployed people um, spending their time um, on this. They're prob probably playing video games. <laughs> well, those are the ones. Oh, yeah. That's that. Actually, that's an interesting because it doesn't allow for that. You would have to fill in the comment to get that. Okay. Um, I guess what, you know, the lesson there is um, a lot of people are work or the of the people who are working, or the plurality at least, what did you say, 58% are working at home. Correct. Working home, which is good. Uh, of course, we don't know the quality of work. I suppose uh, we, we might ask uh, next time around, exactly what are you doing at home? How many hours a day are you spending? And is there any accountability on that? Are you getting paid by the hour, eh? <laughs> it would be interesting to get detail. Sure. Okay, the next one is, how is your physical health compared to what it was like before the pandemic? And uh, that is interesting because, you know, we don't get younger. And that includes when we stay at home all day. We still at home. We don't get younger. So what were the answers on that one, Catherine? Well, 71%, it's about the same. And then we have this 18.42% that say it's actually better. And only about 2% say it's worse. And others, about close to 8%, say 
it's not better or worse, just different. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think I think it's interesting that this is Hawaii. If we were in another state like Texas or or um, Arizona or Florida, um, I don't know. We might have a a different response. Yeah, and and furthermore, I mean, I'm not I'm not sure we'll do this because uh, the next survey, which we've already written, does not include this. But over time, if you keep on asking this question, you know, just the normal nature of things, people's health is not going to be as good as it was at a time in the past because, as mm -hmm. I mentioned, you know, most people get older, and uh, that's a good thing. Um, and as they get older, maybe their physical health is not as good as it was. So it'd be interesting to see what happens if we all have to stay indoors, you know, for months and months and more months uh, to see how the answer to this question changes. Although if we're out walking, then maybe, you know, to get outside, maybe we'll, you know, maybe health will even improve because I think people that may not have been walking <clears throat> have increased their walking based on other surveys, or at least yeah. my reading of other surveys. Yeah, and that's, that's the question. Uh, are you exercising? Are you eating right? Are you doing the things you're supposed to be doing? Because if you do, then it's an ideal situation, isn't it? You know, sure. you, don't have, you don't have as much stress, except when you watch television and, and see all the things that are happening in the country. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you reduce your stress, is not watch it. Right. Okay, next one is how is your mental health as opposed to physical health compared to what, how is your mental health compared to what it was like before the pandemic? So what, what answers do we get on that question, Catherine? You know, I think we have to look at this and compare it to physical. We see about the same, which, or it is the same. That's only 39% compared to, you know, compare, contrast that to physical. Um, mental health is worse than their physical it's better is 18%. It's worse is now 18%. And it's not better or worse is 23.68%. So I think um, that people are experiencing um, worse mental health consequences than they are physical health consequences. Yeah. And it's probably not the television. It's probably just claustrophobia for a lot of people just being shut in. Mm -hmm. Not having the reg regular outside recreational things to do, not going to restaurants and bars and meeting their friends and going to events and all those things. You probably, you know, those things help you be in a good state of mind. You know, and I think an important um, thing that we have to consider here is that people thrive on hugs and person to person contact. And when you take that away, you actually worsen someone's mental health. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And Hawaii is a very hug place, uh, at least in my life anyway, and in the ordinary course, I, I'm hugging people all day. It's like saying hi. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really too bad not to have that, and it probably does affect you. I noticed, by the way, that this question, how is your mental health compared to before, and how is your physical health compared to before, we didn't have any comments. We just mm. had, you know, the basic, Mm, you know, single choice. Right. I find that interesting in itself. Nobody wanted to talk about exactly how their health was. Right, right, right. People have a sense of privacy about that. They don't want to tell you, which sure. I, I wish they would. I would say in my case, and you can see if you're willing to discuss it, um, my, my, uh, my mental health is actually mm, mm, not the same. It's, it's the same. I'm in the green. Where are you? Uh, I, same on physical and mental. I'm working out. I'm engaged with, you know, social contacts, you know, doing a lot of things, you know, with people, but not in their presence. But it's different. I would say for me, it's a little different. It's different. Good point. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the problem at home uh, is that you eat too much and you really have to learn True. not to eat because it's so easy to to work, you know, it's compulsive eating in a refrigerator just a few steps away, and that's that's not healthy. And the okay, trick is to shut our mouths, right? <laughs> yeah, well, or find a substitute for it somehow. Right. If you lost your job, when do you expect to be working again? So this is about jobs. So what were the answers on that one, Catherine? 
most people haven't that lost their job and the few that that did um, had no idea that would be 5.56%. So, um, the, you know, this doesn't really apply to us because those responding to this survey are not um, unemployed or mostly aren't. Let me take a sampling of the other comments that, that were left here on this question. Um, interesting, spouse's job eliminated. No job prospects to date. Hmm, that's a rough situation. Uh, here's one that says, got a new job. Good. Um, here's, here's one that says, lost job, but back to work now. So lost a job, got a new job. And we got, we got retired, also retired. Where sure. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's an appropriate comment. Yeah, and I know plenty of people who have just recently retired or are retiring very soon. But that tells you a little bit about how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> not me <laughs> <laughs> okay um question six if you're living on savings how much longer can you last big question at a time when you know state and federal benefits are running out um and it's not clear what the state can do or the fed will do even in the morning paper it's not clear that the republicans um, and the Democrats will agree to a bill, and it's it's all it's become politicized, as a matter of fact. So um, when you're asking somebody if they're living on savings, it's a really heavy question. What were the answers here? Well, about five point um, seven percent are uh, will be okay for thirty days, and then um, then there are seventeen percent that would be okay for the um, until the end of the year, and um, then a vast, you know, a, a large number, 45%, said that they can support themselves indefinitely. And um, then there are 17% that say, I don't know how long I can last. I'm kind of confused about this because I don't, you know, seemed like a vast majority were working um, and only a small portion weren't. So I'm kind of wondering you know, it doesn't seem like those responding that there were that many that were living on savings. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, maybe, maybe it requires more detail. Like what is exactly what is savings? Mm -hmm. um, now maybe savings includes social security, um, maybe savings, um, you know, includes things that will dry up. Uh, you know, if, if social security gets cut and, this president has said he would like to do that. That'd be perfect right now, wouldn't it? Um, uh, then, then we, you know, then we get a different answer to this question because uh, that I think a lot of people would consider that as part of a savings in a broad sense. Sure, the retired people might have answered that. Yeah, or if they have a stock account, if they're living on the, you know, interest or, or sure dividends from a stock account, uh, I guess they're assuming in this question that that'll continue and that's enough for me to get along on, blah, blah, blah. But if, if the stock market falls apart, which is another show, another discussion, um, their answer will, will change. They won't have any cash flow from those things or it'll sure. be severely reduced. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, let me just see. Okay, we had some comment type uh, answers. Let me run through some of them. <clears throat> uh, here's one that this shows you um, how he handled the question. I'm still working. One says, I I'm supported by family. That's, that's good. That's maybe better than savings. As long as the family has good savings. Then. Right. <clears throat> here's one says, collecting social security, not dipping into savings. Good. And um, this guy says, what do you mean savings? I have no savings. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I guess that means he's in real trouble. <laughs> well, and I think that that's pretty common amongst a lot of people because it's pretty expensive to live in Hawaii and to actually be able to survive and actually put something away is not easy for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And, and that is going to take a toll. You know, it was... Um, it was a bad prospect when we looked at this, you and me, first time the issue came up in these surveys. Um, but it's more deadly now because we're in, you know, a pause. And it may be uh, that um, we have to pause for a long time. 
Um, despite um, you know the need to get the economy going again, people are really afraid um, because they don't you know they they worried about going mm-hmm. to group things and restaurants and events and all that. Sure. So <clears throat> the economy um, doesn't have a lot of jobs right now. Good for these people who say they got work, but a lot of people don't have work and they're they're very thin and they're going to get thinner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, question seven. Do you believe the federal government has done a good job in balancing health care with the reopening? Oh, that's the question of the day, isn't it? Uh, how did the answers come out? Well, not very many people felt that they were doing a good job, only about 8%. And um, 76% felt that they were not doing a good job. And then there were those that don't know yet, and that was about close to 16%. Yeah, that's that's an interesting category, and, and it's uh, actually bigger than I thought it would be. So that's almost sixteen percent. I don't. What are they saying? They're saying that um, maybe maybe the federal government will do a good job in balancing health care with the. Well, it's fluid. It you know um, we have new numbers every day in different parts of the country and. You know, the same way that you're going to deal with one state, like, are you going to um, address like, like um, Wisconsin, not, uh, not Wisconsin, uh, like Montana, um, the same as you would Texas? I mean, I don't think so. I think each state has their own unique situation. Some are similar to each other, but you also have states that don't have the numbers and are not impacted as well as much. Yeah, and if you went to, a, this has been politicized. Trump's success or lack of success uh, on dealing with COVID is, 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 is a political issue. He has politicized it. So if you go to a red state, you go to get answers like, oh yeah, the federal government done a great job. Um, whether that's true in the eyes of anybody in the blue state or not. If you go to a blue state, you're more likely to have them say what, what they said here in the survey, uh, no, the federal government has not done a good job dealing with health care. Um, I'm not sure how many people in, in our state are, you know, politicized on the issue. I think they're probably more rational about it. And I think this is probably a, mm, an accurate statement. That's just my reaction to it. Mm. Uh, but I'd be interested in seeing, you know, about the I don't know yet people. I mean, next month, the month after that, if we ask the same question, it'd be interesting to compare it. Because um, he's trying now, as today, come back and do his uh, Rose Garden uh, task force meetings. Uh, if he's successful at that, more people will say, oh, yeah, done a good job or trying to do a good job. If he's not successful and he rambles and makes statements that are, you know, untrue and unhelpful, if he takes weird steps like he's been taking, then more people are going to say, next time we ask this question, that sure. the federal government hasn't done a good job. Sure. I think one thing is clear, Catherine, when they, when they say federal government, you're saying Trump because he is the federal government on this issue. He's making all the decisions. Sure. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's no other on that question. We're into question eight. Do you believe the state has done a good job? This is more complex. Do you believe the state has done a good job in balancing health care with the reopening? Aha. What are our answers there, Catherine? Um, well, we have the same number of people said yes, and the same number of people said no. 36.84% said yes, and the same with no. And then we've got a little larger percentage that say that they don't know yet, which is about 23%. So it's quite divided. Um, and uh, that's kind of not on political lines. You know, um, because we have the vast majority in Hawaii are Democrats. So for it to be divided that way, uh, maybe it's um, maybe pro gay supporters and those that are not supportive of them. I don't know. Yeah, well, well, you hear hear statements on both sides of it, don't you? I mean, in the street, we talk to people. I shouldn't say in the street. There is no street. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I haven't been walking around the street and asking people lately, but uh, maybe. (laughs) Uh, Very interesting. We did have uh, some. uh, Here's a sample. This is for the comments. 
the decision-making criteria have been opaque. I love a thoughtful answer. The communication confused, and folks are doing a bad job of communicating to an anxious community. Where have all the leaders gone? That's a statement about leadership, isn't it? Mm, yes. Mm. And, and when you hear negative comments, including you know the, these comments here where the answer for half the people is, um, no, I don't believe the state has done a good job. Uh, they're really pointing to leadership. Well, you know, one thing that I can point out, though, is if you're pro-opening economy, you're probably going to appreciate those actions that are taken to open the economy. If you're anti-opening the economy, you will probably find those actions to be inappropriate. So I think that that may account for some division here. Yeah, I agree. I, I think there's, there's a, a large number of people in Hawaii who want to see the economy open because they're either business owners or they used to have a job that they can't go back to or they're involved in the hotel business. You know, they would want to see the reopening at all costs. Um, and then the other side says, I don't care about that. Um, I, I just want people to get healthy. I want us to lick, I want us to lick the virus first. So that's the, that's the conundrum around the country. And, and we, it looks like we have it here too, as you say. Okay, question nine. Uh, how should Hawaii balance public health and the reopening? Okay, so this is an affirmative question. How should we balance these things? What are the answers? Um, well, we have 34% saying that public health is more important than the reopening. And then uh, we have 55% that say they're equally important and 2% um, undecided and um, then 5% that don't know enough to answer. 0% um, said the opening is, reopening is more important than public health. Um, so we don't have any like kind of renegades that say, oh, we don't care, you know, just go out there and breathe on everyone. Yeah, interesting that um, yeah, more than half say they're equally important. And that's consistent with the, the answers to the last question. Um, sure. But m I guess most people, the majority of people believe they're equally important. I'm not sure I agree with that because I don't think you can have a reopening without people being healthy and, and confident uh, of, of being involved in the business community. Oh, good, Jay. We are on opposites. I say that they're equally important. <laughs> I think that's how I answered. Well, yeah, okay, well, good. <laughs> See, I, mean, I go back to the very beginning when I saw what was going on in Washington. Right, right. Not to dwell on this, but I said, well, how can you do reopening when you haven't solved the basic problem? Um, and at that point, when he was talking, Trump was talking about reopening, he's the guy that started talking about this. He was the one that sent the signal, we've got to reopen now. But at that point, we really hadn't done anything about about the virus. And I said, wait, 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 wait. Don't you want to do something about the virus first? If you reopen, you're going to en enhance the possibilities for virus. Don't you want to go step one, step two? Um, we didn't do that. Had we done that, you and I can agree or not, had we done that, we would all be in better shape. And I think Dr. Fauci would totally agree with me. But that's just Dr. Fauci and me. <laughs> 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 you got to get Dr. Fauci on your show. <laughs> yes, I think we will. <laughs> we, had, we had a response worth mentioning. Um, this is an, a comment response. It says, Hawaii residents no longer have a stable financial future absent governmental financial assistance. Okay, that's not directly responsive, but uh, that's, that's the balance. <laughs> that has to be factored in. Okay, uh, question 10. How optimistic are you about the reopening? Select one. What are the answers? Okay, I'm quite optimistic as a tiny 2%, and I'm somewhat optimistic as 26%. I'm not optimistic at all as 21%, and I'm a little pessimistic as 18%. I'm very pessimistic as 15%, and it's too early to say is 15%. Hmm. Well, okay. I guess I guess somewhat optimistic is the winner on that one. Um, 
No, it, certainly, I'm very, uh, very, let's see, uh, somewhat optimistic. Uh, I'm not optimistic at all, is the second one. I'm a little pessimistic, the third one. I'm very pessimistic. Uh, there's, there's very few people who say I'm optimistic. I'm quite optimistic. But, you know, then you have to look at the population that are typically optimistic versus typically pessimistic and right. whether this would go along those lines. I mean, I wonder if it's personality type or is it solely the issue? Well, I think it's personality type. It's also, <laughs> it's Hawaii. People right. in Hawaii are generally optimistic as they should be. Sure. Because things do usually work out. I mean, we have our problem, but it's not like you can walk around with like little Abner with a cloud raining <laughs> on your head all day. <clears throat> but I find it very interesting to say I'm somewhat optimistic because, uh, and by the way, I, I'm not somewhat optimistic. I'm less optimistic than I myself. Um, because I don't know what the evidence is to suggest optimism here. What do you mm. think? Oh, my gosh. I don't remember how I answer answered i would probably say because i'm an optimistic person i would say i'm somewhat optimistic the, and the reason i would say that is because every single time that there's some big catastrophic event that is that the media focuses on like a for example um a hurricane i you know i love to go out and prep and everything and you know the drama that's created is never um it almost never comes to fruition. So, you know, I'm sort of optimistic that maybe there's, it's a little less dire than is reported. Understood. Um, um, I studied history, my minor in college, and that did not make me an optimist. Ah. Um, and right now I'm watching a, a, a series um, on, I guess it's on Amazon uh, video, and it's called uh, something about the, uh, the Black Death in Europe in the 14th century mm. um, by a woman named uh, Dorsey, Dorsey Armstrong, who teaches at Purdue. She's very good. And she talks about the Black Death. And the Black Death is a, it's a similar kind of um, you know, social experience as we have now. And they didn't know what to do. And, and they became very disheartened. They, they, as a community all over Europe, Right at the, at the end of the day, Europe was actually cut in half by the Black Plague. Well, if you name it the Black Death or Black Plague, it's definitely going to be a kind of a pessimistic environment. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they they did, never found a vaccine, I'll tell you that. This was the oh 14th my gosh. century. <laughs> Let's just hope we don't get that. Well, you don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a certain school of people that say, oh, we're going to develop a vaccine. It's on the horizon. You know, and uh, Trump says, no, it's just a sniffle. Send the kid home. No problem. You know, it'll be all right. Um, which I have a lot of trouble with that on many levels. Um, but uh, Sure. I agree. You know, it, um, it could be that we don't have a vaccine. It could be that it just goes around the world. It could be that... Um, you know, we get a vaccine, but it's not an effective vaccine. It could be that we, sure. we don't really develop a therapeutic that will be meaningfully save lives. So it's all, it's all open. Uh, yeah. we, should, we should know some of this by the end of the year. We should know, you know what it looks like going forward by the end of the year. That's what I think. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we got one more question, Catherine. Um, when, <laughs> this is a dynamite question, when do you <laughs> want tourists to come back? Because that's inter, inter, intermingled with all of this. What were the answers? Well, what I, what I have and for, um, is, huh, I'm looking at, at what we have on the screen and what I have, and it's different. Um, okay, well, what I have is as soon as possible is five. Oh, did I miss one? 5%. Um, and in steps over time, 36%. Not until two, uh, 2021, 18%. Uh, I want fewer tourists, 18%. Uh, I don't want tourists to come back, 10%. I don't know yet about 8%. That's all over the board. And very few want them to come back as soon as possible. And I think those that 
you know, kind of get that uh, there has to be a balance with the economy and health, I think they are saying in steps over time. Yeah, and I think there's, 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 you're right, it's all over the board for a lot of reasons. Um, I think some of the reasons that people are hesitant about saying, I want everybody, I want the tourists back right away is because they, they would like to see the, you know, Hawaii reorganized, reimagined a little bit. Um, I mean, it's a question of, did you, did you like the tourists to begin with? Did mm-hmm. you like having a state with a mono economy so fragile, so right. you know, unsustainable in a time of crisis? And, and I think that enters into it. Um, the other, the other thing is, uh, and this is related, is what about diversifying the economy? Not only reimagining the level of tourism, but diverse, diversifying into other levels. And it's, you know, it's like the conversation at that point that has existed for as long as I've been mm-hmm. aware. Which right. Is, some people say, "Yeah, we really got to do that." Minority. Other people, majority, say, "We haven't been able to do it so far. We can't do it now." Stop jawboning on diversification. We're never going to get it, which is that's very discouraging and pessimistic. But that's a lot of people feel that way. Uh, I want to I want to see if there are any responses here of interest. There's one of interest. Um, this is not necessarily. Hmm, well, maybe it is relevant. Six foot social distancing forces the tourist industry to rethink its whole industry. It will never be the same. That assumes that we won't have an effective vaccine um, and that we'll have to continue on these, um, you know, these existing secondary defenses like masks and social distancing. And maybe he's got a point there or she, you know, to, to look at this question, you have to figure that in. We cannot have tourism the way it was for medical reasons right now. We're not right now. Yeah. And, you know, we'll have to see. But, um, you know, they've been ever since I've lived in Hawaii, since 88, the discussion has been on diversification and diversification is a sound um, way to proceed in almost anything, any economic um, environment. So to not diversify your economy isn't sound economic sense. So I think you have to. And I think we we should. Yeah, and this is a big message to that effect. And um, and, and one thing to watch, you and me and, uh, I don't know, people people in, in Bishop Street in general, should be watching to see what the government does about this, because there's clearly um, an impetus here, a driver. This whole crisis is a driver that we should rethink our economy. And uh, the legislature didn't do anything so far about that. And neither did the governor. Um, but as time goes by, uh, we shouldn't forget the, the issue has been raised and we should see what they do. And so if they do nothing, that's really a squandered opportunity. They sure. Should do something. They should do something ambitious, as a matter of fact. Right, right. So uh, any, any closing remarks you want to make, Catherine? Uh, we've, we've come to the end of our, of our survey again. Uh, what, what do they say? Uh, they used to say this on the on the on the, uh, the automobile show. You've squandered another perfectly good half hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I think the people in Hawaii are smart people. And I think um, generally we're doing well as a state, except we do have a lot of challenges ahead. And I think we're making those decisions when we vote in November. Yes, it's time for every citizen to take a position on things, <laughs> to be aware, <clears throat> to understand our surveys, maybe, and sure, there we go. All <laughs> the news and issues, and and uh, do some thoughtful voting in November. In fact, in August too, we have sure. August eighth is primary day. So, well, thank you, Catherine. It's been great. It's always great, and I'll see you next month for more. Thank you, Jay. That was fun. That was fun. Aloha. Aloha.